<clears throat> it is storming outside. Like it is like lightning and thunder and rain and hail. Uh, I'm lucky I have internet right now, so <laughs> I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna gamble and and say the electricity is not gonna go out for the next ten minutes, and we'll hope for the best here. It just cracks so loud outside. I could tell when it, the the storm's coming. I have three dogs, by the way. I have a, a, a French bulldog named Bentley. I have a pit bull named Baby, and she's a baby. And I have a golden doodle name uh what's his name oh louie yeah <laughs> louie and i they're upstairs typically 99 percent of the time but when a storm comes in and mommy's not upstairs right the wife's away picking up the kid from uh from by the way he had taekwondo Preston had taekwondo camp today and by the way they barely do any taekwondo they usually just go bowling or watch a movie or do water fights uh, but a little bit of Taekwondo. That's beside the point. The dogs came streaking down, literally streaking, um, when the first crack of, of thunder and lightning hit, and which is, and they started crying. And I just, I literally had, I was doing this video, and I, I couldn't do it uh, <laughs> with a bunch of dogs crying. So this is take two. Uh, and take two is, if you haven't figured it out, direct guest join, the ability to, uh, <clears throat> Direct Guest joins a joint venture between Microsoft and, and Zoom. Um, getting an agnostic platform in the in the virtual meeting space or virtual conferencing room space. You as a user or a company or enterprise or educator or whatever it might be, you have a choice, right? You can, there's plenty of vendors that make conferencing room hardware. Uh, I'm a little slanted, <laughs> a little biased. Uh, I work for Zoom, if you haven't figured that out. I do have a Zoom shirt on. I am a full-time employee of Zoom. I am by no means a figurehead for Zoom, nor a spokesman for Zoom. I just like to show you cool stuff, and a lot of times, it has to do with Zoom. Uh, with that said, if you haven't seen Zoom Rooms, did you even know Zoom had Zoom Rooms, and Zoom Phone, and Zoom Webinars, and Zoom Breakout Rooms? Getting off the point, Zoom Rooms... Probably one of the most unheralded things that happened in the last two years. Obviously, we've had it longer than that, but you haven't been in a conferencing room for the last two years, so you have no idea what Zoom Room can do. Um, by the way, I like to doodle with things as I have meetings, and my latest doodle gadget is a Apple Pen with a magnet. I have no idea where this magnet is from, but it sticks to the Apple Pen, which obviously is magnetic as well, and I play with it all the time. So if you're wondering what this is, it's nothing. It's a doodle. It's a it's a twiddler. It is just something to keep my hands occupied below the desk uh, when I'm nervous during a meeting. I'm not nervous. <laughs> I'm just playing with it. All right. What, 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 what the hell is Patrick talking about today? Oh, yeah. Direct guest join. Part three, by the way. Part one, I showed you how to invite a Zoom room to a Microsoft Teams meeting. I showed you how to invite a Teams room to a Zoom meeting. Uh, part two was me sending a Zoom invite to... That's wrong. Part two was me sending a Teams invite to a Zoom room. As you can guess, part three is me sending a Zoom invite to a Microsoft Teams room. That's not as exciting as joining the meeting. Obviously, there's two parts to the meeting. One part is organizing the meeting, creating all the invites and sending them out. The second part is actually joining the meeting, right? Let's concentrate on that second part today. I've already showed you how to... to to invite a Microsoft Teams room to a Zoom meeting, just for a quick recap. Excuse me, quick recap. I'm gonna go right over here. Here is Outlook. Uh, I work for Zoom. Uh, we don't use Outlook. <laughs> Zoom is a Google shop. So what I'm gonna showcase is all these things in my test tenant, my test Office 365 tenant, are all. Uh, in in my tenant this is this is nothing in zoom's tenant and and in full disclosure uh i i i don't use zoom stuff for zoom demos i use my stuff for every one of my zoom demos so this is a one of my demos this is uh my admin at pkfabrication.com it's my made-up tenant my made-up company and we're utilizing the power of of this office 365 zoom rooms Team Rooms and Zoom Client to show you this demo. So here's Outlook. 
you don't know how to invite somebody in Outlook, you probably have never attended a meeting, <laughs> I'm guessing, right? To, in, to create a meeting invite, you literally go to the calendar section and you're gonna have the ability to create and organize meetings. Obviously, I've already created a couple of meetings just for demo purposes. I've created a Teams meeting right here and I've created a Zoom meeting right here. I've done this with a couple of different ways. I've done it mainly with the, the Zoom plugin or the, or the Teams plugin. Again, watch uh, part one of my series if you don't know how to invite a Zoom room to a Teams meeting and a Teams room to a Zoom meeting. So we're gonna pretend I already did this. I've actually already opened up and created a Zoom meeting. I've already invited uh, several people to this meeting and all these people are right here. What's important part is that we care about conferencing rooms. So let's go to the resource rooms or equipment. When I invite a resource room or uh, equipment to a Teams and or Zoom meeting, it's gonna show up here in the resource room. So I wanna book this Microsoft Teams room. The great thing about it, I'm booking this Microsoft Teams room for a Zoom meeting because it doesn't matter what kind of meeting you wanna organize. Teams rooms and Zoom rooms can adjoin either one of those meetings. And to add a little bit of extra flavor, Zoom rooms can actually join by default, by natively with CRC or conferencing room connector, Zoom rooms can also also order uh, H323, uh, join H323 and SIP meetings. Teams rooms can do it, but not natively or by default. You need a third party uh, vendor in between called Cloud Video Interop to make that happen. Microsoft Teams rooms do, do not join H323 or SIP meetings. So all your Cisco equipment and poly equipment not gonna be able to join a Teams meeting unless you have a lot of extra stuff, right? Natively, Zoom rooms does that. So we're gonna stay native. We're gonna join a Team, using a Teams room, we're going to join a Zoom meeting. You've seen me, uh, you've seen the invite. I'm going to join right here. I'm actually already joined the meeting, first of all. If you look at participants, they're the same participants that are right here, right? And you can see who accepted the meeting, actually who had no response to the meeting. So you can see when I send a Zoom invite out, I can actually see who have actually accepted the meeting and who I expect to be participating in that meeting. Obviously, I'm in the meeting right here as well as Patrick, uh, sorry, Microsoft Teams room is actually in the meeting. And then admin who is hosting the meeting is actually organizing the meeting, all right? So now what that's gonna allow me to do is obviously join a meeting, join a Zoom meeting from any Zoom client, whether it's mobile or desktop or laptop. I'm in this meeting now, I can share content now, not a big deal. But now say I'm Patrick Kelly and I've been invited to this meeting, which I have been. I've accepted this meeting, which I have, but I noticed in the invite that the meeting is in the Microsoft Teams room conferencing room. So I, as my workflow, need to carry my laptop and or desktop, well, I'm not carrying my desktop, carry my laptop or my mobile and go into that Microsoft Teams room. I don't have to. I can literally just walk into the Microsoft Teams room and join the meeting and, and be an attendee of that meeting. But in order to present data, present screens, present applications, I need some sort of client, right? I could do it from my phone, my iPhone, my Android phone. I could do it from my iPad. I could do it from my tablet. I could do it from my laptop. I'm on a laptop, right? So let's walk through that, work, that workflow once more. When I organize a Teams and or Zoom meeting, there's two levels of participants, three levels actually in this example. One is the organizer. Two is the meeting room or conferencing room. Three are attendees. Now, as an organizer, I'm obviously going to join from my desktop or laptop because I have stuff to present during the meeting. As an attendee, I may or may not have uh, stuff to present. I might just have my beautiful face and my beautiful voice attending the meeting and I comment on stuff that's being presented. And then three, the conferencing room also needs to be part of that because when you walk into a conferencing room, you're going to have probably multiple screens, multiple mic arrays, multiple speakers. If it's a huddle room, you probably have one. If it's a bigger room, you probably have several. Right, so let's walk through that workflow again. I've been invited to a, a, a Teams, a Zoom meeting. I'm going to a Microsoft Teams room to attend. I actually also wanna take my laptop or desktop because I don't wanna take my desktop, my laptop or, or, or iPhone because I actually wanna present data as well or comment on data being presented or maybe even co-author on a whiteboard. So you with me? We're Susie in HR. We're gonna walk to the conferencing room. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna switch cameras. We're gonna switch to our Epoch cam here. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to switch it up here. What basically the Epoch cam allows me to use my iPhone as a camera during my Zoom meetings. 
So let's go to Epoch Cam. And what you're going to see is you're going to see me walk over to the Microsoft Teams room over there in the corner. The Microsoft Teams room is a, let's just pretend it's a conferencing room, <laughs> right? And so Susie in HR has organized the meeting. She went to Outlook. She started the Zoom meeting plugin in Outlook. She invited the Microsoft Teams room to her Zoom meeting. And now she's going to walk over and show you what the Zoom meeting looks like from a Microsoft Teams room perspective. You're not going to be hear, hear me talk because uh, I'm not going to take this microphone over there. I'm just going to walk over there and show you what a Zoom room looks like. Sorry, Zoom meeting looks like inside of a Microsoft Teams room. How to join, what it looks like from a join experience. And then I'll come back and, and we'll share some screens and share some stuff, what it looks like. Okay, so watch, watch this. All right, so now you've seen what it looks like from a Microsoft Teams room experience. You've seen what it looks like when, when Susie and HR walks over to a Microsoft Teams room. One touch join experience launches a Zoom meeting right from the Microsoft Teams room. Obviously, I, have a, uh, I actually have a Poly X30 hooked up to my Microsoft Teams room. So you actually see the camera pointing at my desk. Not very interesting, I understand that. But you can see from a perspective of what a user looks like when they walk into a conferencing room, they're going to see the camera of the, obviously, the, of the conferencing room itself. They're going to see all the attendees' cameras. So if you look at from a Microsoft Teams room perspective, what Susie in HR is looking at inside of the, the conferencing room, here's what she's looking at. She's looking at a picture of, of my screen, right? Not very helpful because then you're going to see a bunch of people. But what if the screen is looking at me? And then Susie in HR sees that screen over there. And then every participant that is involved in the meeting, she's going to see a panoramic view above. Now, what happens? That's great for audio video, Patrick, but what if I'm sharing content, right? What if I want to share my screen? Let's just share, well, I don't know, screen number one. Let's just share, let's make it easy. We're going to share screen number one into the Microsoft Teams room. And then every attendee that's part of this Microsoft Teams meeting, sorry, the Zoom meeting or Microsoft Teams room, they're in the conferencing room, are gonna see the exact same thing. What do you think they're gonna see, right? I'm sharing my screen. I'm gonna show you real quick. I'm sharing screen one. I'm sharing screen one right from my Mac. Why that's important is now look at the Teams room. The Teams room is, sh is sharing the exact same screen everyone is attending. They're sh sharing the zo same Zoom screen that everyone has, right? So everyone that's an attendee in the meeting is going to join a Zoom meeting, whether you're from a remote desktop, a laptop, an iPhone, an iPad, or you're in the conferencing room itself, you're going to see the exact same screen. And that is of me annotating uh, a, a meeting, uh, sorry, a, a screen. So watch, watch what happens here. I can actually utilize this tool. I, I know I'm covering my camera. I can actually utilize the tool of Zoom and actually start annotating. I can start doing all the cool stuff that I would do during a Zoom meeting and it will show up on the screen because the screen is sharing my Microsoft, the, my, the Microsoft Teams room is sharing the Zoom screen. Why that's important is watch this. Now I can go over here and start using annotate tools and start drawing stuff, right? I can see, you can see the little uh, red circle. You can see all this cool stuff. And I'm annotating actually on the screen using Zoom tools inside of a Microsoft Teams meeting. Now that's super, sorry, Microsoft Teams room. That's super cool. It's a Zoom meeting hopping inside of Microsoft Teams room. And vice versa, I showed you uh, yesterday a Teams, uh, sorry, a Zoom room joining a Microsoft Teams meeting. Again, agnostic in this space. So it doesn't matter anymore what you're utilizing. I'm actually gonna switch cameras real quick and go back to uh, my Prezi camera. Why is that cool for an IT organization? It's cool for any organization. I'm gonna stop sharing real quick 
uh, from my screen over here. What this allows you to do, whether you're a CIO, a CTO, an IT admin, IT director, I don't care. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. What you're doing is providing choice. Why that's important is we don't live, again, in the 80s and 90s of this draconian IT philosophy of, hey, I'm going to push this thing down, whether you like it or not. You're going to have to use it for the next three to five years, whether you like it or not. That's not how people work today. People want choice. People, There's not one tool that does everything perfectly for everyone. IT works differently than accounting. Accounting works differently than HR. HR works different than legal. And are you saying to me that there's one tool that could do everything perfectly for everyone? That would be great if there were. That would be great if there were. But a lot of companies are choosing multiple uh, UCAS providers to complete their UCAS stack. Now, granted, I'm a little biased. I think Zoom can be that tool. I think Zoom could be that tool from chat all the way to phone, all the way to rooms, to webinars, to breakout rooms, to digital signage, to events, to call center, to whiteboard, to chat. Are you think you're seeing the point? Zoom can be that utopia. Zoom can provide every single modality in the UCAS space. And that, again, provide choice. You give Zoom to a user and they have other choices. I won't name names. They have other choices. They're going to pick Zoom for a majority of those reasons. For their workflows fit. Susie in HR needs a different tool than Bob in accounting. Bob needs a different tool than Steve in sales. That might be why you would, have, you would have Microsoft Teams and Zoom in the same organization to provide choice, to provide a path for communication, both internal, internal communication. Teams is actually really good at it. Internal communications, smaller type meetings, one-on-one -on -one type meetings. You know what? Teams is pretty good at that. Where Zoom excels is all those revenue generating communications that you have, all those revenue generating meetings, all those revenue generating calls, all the revenue generating webinars. Guess what tool is the best for that? You got it. Zoom. Don't just believe me. Go try it. Please, I implore you, go try an external Teams meeting. Then go try a, an external revenue generating Zoom meeting. And you tell me which one you as a user and you as a presenter and you as an attendee liked the best. Which one had the most tools? Which one allowed the most effective collaboration? Which one had the highest quality? That's an important factor. All your revenue generating communication needs, your external calls, your external meetings, your external webinars. Don't you want those to be the highest quality possible? You might get away with a little clipping here and there. If it's an internal call, my camera is a little jittery. I don't really care that much. But if I'm presenting to a board of directors, I'm presenting to a, to a full house of 20 people with checkbooks. I want that quality to be perfect. And I never even want to worry about it. I want to be fully confident that my external communication or my revenue generating application that I choose has the most functions, the most modalities, the easiest to join, the easiest to present, and the highest quality. Those are the reasons you choose a UCAS provider. And that's exactly what I'm saying that Zoom provides. Again, don't believe me. Go try it yourself.